Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a graphic from Finale and put it into Illustrator and then back out to Word. Now, you might say, why in the world would I ever want to do that? Well, Illustrator, why do I need that extra step, in other words? Well, Illustrator allows you to um, manipulate every part of the image if you export your graphic as an EPS file, an encapsulated postscript file. So with the graphics tool selected, I'll just select my cord, export selection, make sure it is EPS, all the usual suspects, allow transparency, um, can come in handy later but we won't worry about that right now, theory paper, call it theory paper 1, replace the one that's already there. Theory Paper 2, okay, so now I'm going to go to Illustrator, it's an older version of Illustrator, but this will be the same in the new ones as well, File, Place, to get our image there we go under the File tab to place theory paper one and there it is file place theory paper two there it is oops okay they put them right on top of each other and that can kind of throw you now look uh, you have this toolbox over here this selection tool now um, there's tons of dialog boxes or little uh, tool palettes that we have here and they're under window luckily for us we don't need all of these to make scores we don't need um, quite a few of these so fortunately even though Illustrator is super complex we don't need all of them to make really great theory papers really great scores uh, but if for some reason that toolbox wasn't there it's under tools see it's gone now you have to make sure just like in finale or numerous other programs that there's a check by it and now it appears again so now that we have this we could align these guys by coming over here to the align uh, the, the align palette now notice align once again so I'm gonna kinda align them in the middle now notice it's doing the middle because you see how big of a box? That's my selection. When I made my finale file, that's my selection, okay? So I didn't make each selection exactly the same, so they're not going to align that easily, so I have to kind of eyeball it. So I can just click on it using the selection tool and just move it until the lines appear like they're kind of intersecting, like this line kind of goes into that line. Looks pretty good. Okay. So on the tool palette you'll notice like the V, the A, the Y, the Q, all these things you can basically Z for zoom, that's a zoom tool down there notice when I hold down I press V or it's gonna stay the same because that's a selection tool Z, zoom, those quick things. Another good thing to realize is that that's with the zoom tool I'm zooming in if I hold the command key if I'm on any tool, it'll turn into the selection key. So instead of having to press V every time, you can just toggle back and forth between whatever tool you want. Okay. So now I'm going to add text. And text is here under character. This one can be a little tricky to find. If for some reason, like, you can close these. Oh my gosh, where'd it go? I can't find them now. I can't use my text tool. Well, I'll just go to Window and find Text Tool. Oh, there's no text tool. So what do I do? This is why it's tricky. It's under type. And we go to character, or we can press command T. And there it's back again. Thank goodness, right? So I'm going to pick something else. Pick a different font. Like Times New Roman. I'm going to pick bold. Now notice you can pick that bold. The weight. Or not the weight, the um, size. The... Uh, distance between lines, the distance between 
the distance between the uh, base of the character, the distance between the base and the bottom, like the set the kerning between two characters, set the tracking for the selected characters. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can make it look exactly the way you want it to. Normally, good old fashioned, just leave it the way it, it comes is fine. But if you want to scooch them apart, you can change things under here. So with Times New Roman Bold, I'm going to put something like example one period and then I'm going to come over here instead of bold I'm going to pick regular and do chords period and using the command key I can toggle between the uh, text and the selection tool and when I just click an open space now we are not selected when it's blue like that it means we have it selected right okay so that's how you do that now I told you that we could move just the just that note let's say that C we want to turn it into a D because let's say you messed up in finale and you're like oh that was supposed to be a D instead of having to go back to finale and start all over all we can have to do is select that guy and move it now they're grouped together when I pick one I can't ungroup it it looks like this guy's group, but it's not. If I click that group, you'll see it changes. But they're grouped together, so that means that I can't just change one element. I have to ungroup it. So how you ungroup it, if you go to the Object tab, we have Group and Ungroup. I'm going to pick Ungroup or Command-Shift-G. And now it's ungrouped. So sometimes it's a little funky. Like, if I go to the Selection tool, you're going to notice... Oh, it works when I'm right on it. Oh, but this one, to get that... In other words, how they're turning blue, sometimes it's a little weird. Like that one's right on it. But if I want to change this C, sometimes I have to move up here to select it. So I have to move up here now that it's blue. If I click, I've selected it. That blue line next to it means I've selected it. So I could just move this with the with the um, selection tool. I could just move it, or I can use my arrow keys once it's selected. So I change that C to a D. If I want to change this guy, I could just select it, and move it to a B, move them over. And if I can't quite align them, I can hold down the Shift key just like you would in Finale or anything else to select more than one object. So select, select this guy. Notice I had to go all the way up there to select the D, but I did. And then come down here and I select that. And I can use my align, my align box or my align tool once again in horizontal align center. And so now when you look, these guys are perfectly lined up. Now if I'd had to go back and do that in finale, that would have taken me a lot longer to get it back into Illustrator to do all these things right so it's very useful to know some illustrator and I can move this guy over just using the arrow keys of course I could put this in in uh, Microsoft Word take your pick maybe you want to do it in Word if you're doing others in Word I wouldn't uh, mix it I would do one or the other so now that we have that I want to get this image out so I'm going to hit file export you could also hit save for Microsoft Office but I'm going to hit export just to show you we want to save it as a uh, you can save it as a PNG or a TIFF I'm going to pick TIFF though and call it a test TIFF CMYK we can do grayscale doesn't really matter it would be a little smaller if it was grayscale high resolution 300 dpi anti-alias macintosh or pc if you're on a pc okay now i'm going to go to word and just like we would before insert picture from file all right not clip art we want theory images test insert and there you go.